He's very busy, so we will not keep him very long. But Skip Schumacher finds himself in a position I'm not totally sure he thought he'd find himself in before this season. Rare for this amount of success this fast. Uh, Skip Schumacher with us now. Thank you, Skip, for joining us. But let me ask you your level of surprise here. I tell you when you take the job, the percentage of chance that you believe you'll make the playoffs at the end of this season is blank. You would have told me what? I thought it was uh, we were going to make the playoffs only because um, of our rotation and our pitching staff. And uh, I just thought that we were going to have a chance in every single game. Um, last year, the one run games that were lost uh, were, you know, I think we lost 40 of them. So if you just cut those in half, I thought we had a really good chance. And when we added uh, Arias, I think that was the game changer for us. And uh, once we added uh, a real bat at the top of the order to get on for a healthy Solaire and with the pitching staff that could keep us in every single game, I really thought we had a, a really good shot. Um, and, you know, I, I didn't think we were in a development type of mode, our team. I thought we were in a win now type of mode. Um, I know a lot of the critics did not think that. Um, but I, I'm, I think uh, I, I thought we had a really good shot once I took the job. So that's the interesting part, I guess, about the season and how you and Kim were able to adapt and change the roster because you were in full belief of the pitching staff, and Sandy obviously had a bit of a down year compared to winning the Cy Young last year. There was injuries in the rotation, and then towards the end of the year, you had a bullpen game every you know fifth game. So it, it's just, I guess, a credit to you and Kim and how you were able to do it. So how surprising are you that you guys were able to hold on? Well, it's it's a credit to our staff for sure. Um, d definitely not just me. Uh, you know, Mel Stoudemire and um, Beef, our bullpen uh, coach, was you know really good uh, as as far as you know getting the bullpen right. Uh, we made made some changes obviously throughout the year on you know kind of late inning leverage um, bullpen matchups. But yeah, for the most part, um, you know our our bullpen or our our rotation was decimated the last two months, and we had to be creative of getting through games. Um, and our credit to our bullpen, it was whatever you needed at any time. And we had two openers a week uh, for the last probably six weeks when Sandy went down. And that was not easy. It was taxing on our bullpen. Uh, we had a 16-game stretch uh, where we had limited starters. So it was really challenging. There's no doubt about it. Um, but guys stepped up at the right time. Um, it tested our depth in the minor leagues. And I think that's why you know we are where we are right now because of, of the guys that stepped up. Tell me more about beef. <laughs> Please. Uh, beef uh, is an incredible. Uh, Cepeda, yeah, he's, I know where you're going with that. Uh, he's a really good pitching coach, good family man, awesome. But why beef? I'll leave it at that. But why, but why, okay, why, why, you have another good coach, you have another coach named Pipe. What? <laughs> why, why Pipe? Uh, they're, they're just really good nicknames. Uh, I'll give it, I'll give okay. it a, I'll give uh, I feel that. like we've cornered Terrible them. No, without the no, story. I, no, I, I feel mean. like we've cornered the manager. Not only are they good nicknames, they're inappropriate nicknames. And we now have Skip cornered. He doesn't want, look at him. That is real shame on his face before an important uh, game tonight. Uh, I'll, I'll switch over to another uh, question. Who calls you in your life, Jared? Uh, only my mom. Yeah, so when I was a, I was a kid, uh, I had four Jareds on my baseball on my t-ball team, and uh, which is kind of crazy. And my dad didn't love the name Jared anyway for whatever reason. Um, and so I could do a lot of things athletically, but I couldn't skip. And um, and so my dad thought that would be funny, and he nicknamed me Skip. And uh, here I am, and uh, Skip. You know, forty years later, and my my mom my mom calls me uh, Jared or Skippy. Uh, which was off, awful in high school. She actually put Skippy as a license plate on my car uh, when I was 16. That's it was right. absolutely brutal driving into high school for the two or three years of that, driving. That's why you that's overcompensated awesome. by getting jacked, right? You got all you got all physically fit because you're like, I got Skippy as a license plate. Skippy, Skippy with what? Well, yeah, unbelievable. What can you tell me about the relationship with your parents that makes it so your dad doesn't like your name? Like, wasn't he a part of the decision making process? Uh, I mean, I, my wife had a, uh, she got to name my son, uh, and you know, I, I loved it. Thank God. And Brody. So I, 
I, it, it pretty much my my dad let my mom uh, name me and uh, I don't I think uh, there wasn't much argument it's just you know whatever made her happy and but he was going to change it eventually and did Skippy if I may um, <laughs> Skippy. when you all made the deals for Burger and Josh Bell it seemed it's an incredible out. outfit uh, thank Sorry. you very, you know what yeah. guess who he is Listen, every Golly. time every time the marlins make the playoffs i dress like harry styles it's just a long standing right. tradition down mm-hmm. here so congrats you on that you did it in 03 huh yeah, yeah i did at 97 when yeah. he was nine. before he was born i'm sweating like a pig here skippy um, when you guys uh, acquired burger and bell in all seriousness it seemed to provide the spark that led to where you are right now to what degree did those two acquisitions sort of turn things for you? Yeah, it completely chan- uh, transformed our not only our lineup but our cl- our clubhouse. Um, Kim acquired good, really good human beings um, that provided leadership. You asked Jazz, uh, you know, who has impacted him the most this year, and it was Josh Bell uh, or Berger, which is uh, crazy to think about that they've only been here a couple months now. And those are the guys that have impacted him the most, showing him what work ethic looks like, a routine looks like, um, accountability. Uh, they have been incredible. Josh Bell um, has has been playoff has been playoff tested as recently as last year. Um, and in the hit, first hitters meeting, he was the one that spoke up and dove in and talked about the pitcher and this is what we should do. This is how we should game plan. Um, and he just brought everybody on board with him. Uh, Berger, his work ethic is a 10 out of 10. He's been injured earlier in his career with two Achilles uh, injuries. And um, I think he does not take any day in the major leagues for granted. And you can tell by the way he shows up that he's ready to go to war um, every single night. Um, And so when you have those two guys come in and that type of mentality, um, it changes the culture of the clubhouse immediately. And uh, and by the way, we get Berger for at least four more years, which is even better. Uh, for our our franchise and our organization, and somebody you can build around uh, a controllable bat, which you know we des- we definitely need it. So Kim, uh, you know, no pun intended, hit a home run on on both of those uh, trades. I ask you the most professional player you've ever seen, and you can only choose one from work ethic and all of the things you're talking about. There, you've played for a champion. A lot of big leaguers. I'm assuming you're going to take a teammate of some sort, but give me one name when you think maximum professional. That I've ever played with? Yes. Paul Goldschmidt. Wow. Goldie. Yeah. 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 I mean, Albert Pujols is obviously, it's tough to say one, uh, but um, Albert Pujols is tough to sit, to not put right there too. So I know you said one, but Albert Pujols and, and Paul Goldschmidt, I don't know how to like, take one over the other, honestly, uh, for what they meant to, you know, the teams and franchises. And um, if you could build a franchise around one person that uh, loves base running, loves defense, loves hitting, loves his teammates, all the above, it'd be tough not to say Paul Goldschmidt's not your guy. Um, That's that's how much, um, you know, I was impressed with him last year. And Albert Pujols is at the top of that list as well. So it's tough to say one or the other. Adam Wainwright is insane too, but you know I'll, I'll leave you with Albert and and, uh, and Paul. With them far out of the playoff picture, it seemed as if the Mets tried to sabotage your season. <laughs> oh, that was that with was the grounds yeah. crew. That's that, what your, we do. Your, that was yeah. as angry as you've yeah. been with an opponent all season. Correct? You trying to do what you did with the tarp there? I, you know, it was a mistake on my part because I didn't. I totally didn't even cross my mind that th- there was uh, cameras on during a rain delay. Um, and, and so I, I just, um, I had enough, (laughs) I just had enough. My job is to protect the players and to serve the players and have their best interest. What happened that whole week, um, was not, they were protected at all. And, um, and I just felt like something needed to be said, uh, after the three hour rain delay when it was dry, um, and nothing was being done. Uh, and so um, MLB did an awesome job, amazing job of trying to get that game in. They really did. The umpiring crew, umpiring crew tried to get that game in as much as they could. They knew the ramifications of that game and they were going for it. The grounds crew d- did not. Um, and that's what I was upset about. Wow. Were you angry when you saw the uh, grounds crew taking a picture in front of the Marlins dugout when <laughs> everything was said and done? And was there talk of a protest? Were you going to file a protest? 
Uh, there's no talk of a protest. Uh, we were planning on uh, going into New York um, on the off day yesterday if we had to. Um, but no talk of a protest. Um, was I angry about the picture? Uh, it just kind of solidified why I was angry, uh, you know, an hour before uh, of having to deal with that crew. I want to ask you two follow-ups there, and I will leave it alone. But an act of active sabotage by the Mets grounds crew, yes or no? No, I don't think so. I think I think they just they forgot to tarp a few days prior to that. That's what got me upset at the beginning. That's why we had a doubleheader. How you forget to tarp when there was a tropical storm coming in it doesn't really make sense to me. Oh, I forgot. Um, uh, so I don't think it was a, uh, after that. I think it was just a mistake, uh, which, you know, that's that's kind of what um, got me going initially. Another time this season that you were that level of angry. <laughs> um I would say the oh, there's always you know balls and strikes uh, that you know you you just I can't just keep watching my uh, my players just keep getting uh, I can't say the word but um, screwed uh, so I, I think the um, I think the probably in Cincinnati I was wasn't excited about some 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 calls but um, n n I don't think I've ever been that mad um, at at a grounds crew or a um, <laughs> A, a, a non-umpire, I should say, from another team. What'd you say? I mean, come on. I mean, give it up. What did I say? Yeah, I mean, it was, give it up. Just yes, give it up. I mean, come on. it was enraged. Yeah. It's just fury. You're in the playoffs. Who it's care? fury. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um, I just wasn't I, – I, I, it was – the blame kept getting redirected, and I wanted to know who should be blamed. <laughs> you would just, Redirected you would blame. just kept going from place to place. Who will accept my fury? Because, and, of course, your fury arrives, and they're like, that guy over there wasn't me. So you never got good answers, correct? Right. And so that he was the head grounds crew guy, and um, and so, yeah, that's that's – he, he, he was going to wear it. But you're embarrassed by the idea that you went out there and handled the tarp yourself? You're embarrassed by that, that it was on video? No, I, that part. So I went to UC Santa Barbara. We were tarping the field every single morning to play that night. Hand right? in the dirt. Or practice that day. Um, and there's, there's so much rain. So the, the idea that I didn't know what a tarp, uh, taking off a tarp looked like, that was told to me. Uh, didn't uh, I just showed them how it looked uh, because I've done it a million times? <laughs> it was uh, a teaching moment. Oh, it's yeah. the, the yeah. Yeah. So okay. don't, <laughs> don't tell me how to unroll a tarp or talk the field. Like An expert, that was right. my job for two years at seven a.m. before class. Like I, I know how to do this. Um, that, I think the embarrassing part was when I was yelling at the grounds crew um, guy. That that part was um, I wish it was underneath in my office or in the tunnel. Uh, I don't regret. Uh, the the argument i just regret it being on tv last note here can you articulate for me how it compares to other things that you have felt in your playing career the fulfillment of taking pictures on a field because of how you played the last three weeks of the season going through the brewers and the braves and the dodgers to get what you wanted explain articulate for me your joy and where it is that you got most moved uh, by the accomplishment. I, no joke. I'm getting chills right now thinking about it. Um, from where we were in spring training, losing literally every single game. I know spring training doesn't matter, but man, we were getting our ass kicked. Uh, that's just the reality. We were, we were getting our butt kicked. We had some WBC guys um, that were away. We had some other guys playing some important innings or, or innings in, in spring training. And to watch them grow, Solaire turning into a real clubhouse leader, Arias turning into another real clubhouse leader, watching the growth of Lazardo and Braxton. And um, when guys fell, you know, as far as like, you know, Sandy going down um, and guys stepping up into roles that they were not never used to. Tanner Scott coming in for four out saves time and time again. Nardi coming in in the high leverage situations, bases loaded, no outs, no runs. Uh, guys have not gone through this before, and you don't know if you can do it until you're put in that situation. And the belief in our staff that these young guys can do it, 
um, and continue to put them in these situations, knowing that we knew they could do it. They just had to believe it for themselves. Um, it, that goes a long way. But, you know, to see Kim out there, um, you know, first GM to first female GM to get into a postseason. Um, our, a lot of our staff that have not been or a lot of the players that have not been in a postseason, uh, the commute, the fans above our dugout in Pittsburgh that haven't seen uh, a real postseason, um, all of that together. Um, you just kind of look up and look around and um, it, it really was unbelievable. It was surreal. The joy, the happiness on these guys faces. Um, I'll never forget it. I, you know, I've been a postseason as a player. But to see those guys, all the work that they put in um, to get to where we get to, um, it, it was one of the best days ever. Thank you and congratulations. And which would it be harder and more inappropriate for you to describe, beef or pipe? <laughs> which from it's got to be pipe. It's got to be it's pipe, gotta be pipe yeah, it's right? Gotta be it's got to be pipe. Pipe is much easier to to to, uh, to discuss than the beef one. Yes. Wow. Really? Okay. Oh, Very wow. good. We'll upset. leave it a mystery. Yes. It was an upset. I <laughs> don't thought. Get him, coach. I don't think it's because pipe don't is. Get him, skip. Don't get him, I don't skip. Let's, Let's, go skip. Yeah. Let's go, Skip. Yeah. Let's, go. Yeah. Let's go, Skipper. See you later, Skip. All right, Skip All right. Love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> See you. Love you too. Wow, the rare. He loves went us. the other way yeah. that time. Yeah. He initiated. It's weird. There aren't a lot of places where I can say with confidence I have the life experience here that would make something in my wheelhouse confidently. However, working with your father is something that I feel qualified to talk about. And <laughs> Greg Cody and Chris Cody working together on the Greg Cody podcast featuring Greg Cody. With? Mm -hmm. Fine has been a source of great tension. I had to mediate peace with them last week in the garage, both of them very stubborn about things. <laughs> but what, what I recognize in seeing the relationship between Greg and Chris is that Chris will always be Greg's little boy, no matter how adult he is. This was the problem for me on Highly Questionable. My father never thought I was in charge. He was in charge. Mm -hmm. Well, he was. I mean, and Daddy. This yep. is what... Uh, Daddy of Dadder Day fame, yeah. uh, likes. He is in charge of that podcast, and sometimes his son, who's working very hard, wants to go to a Dolphin game, get drunk, and not have to work on his father's podcast. I think we can agree that that podcast, while important to Chris Cody, is not as important, nothing in the world is, as it is to Greg Cody. Greg Cody's podcast is the symbol for his career punctuation it has his name on the title twice yeah I mean. it's not greg cody featuring chris cody with it's yeah. greg cody featuring greg cody with. and you can find it wherever it is that you get your podcast and please do <laughs> that kind of thing and you know it <laughs> come on now he's right and you know it. that's the laziest you've ever gone through your hits right there and and billy it's the laziest billy supported it too like that's them just hitting the final notes on while wow, we're bored with this he's right and you know it. Baby, Brad, that kind of yeah. thing. Baby. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That kind of thing. All right. <laughs> now, we got a great new podcast out. Jeremy's on it. He's singing show tunes. Hey, yo. What a great story Jeremy tells about when I ask him whether or not he, in the middle of a postgame shower with his high school baseball team, he broke into a show tune. What a wonderful story that was. Wow. It didn't happen. Whoa, spoiler, spoiler alert. alert. Yeah, geez. Jeez, huh. way to go. Huh. I mean, it was uh, the premise was there. It could have run yeah. with it. Set it up Said you stumbled yeah. with it. Mm. That kind of thing. Good podcast anyway. Great episode. And, and Christopher, by the way, with his tail between his legs, came through for me this week with a little dolphin postmortem which I couldn't do because I was on a cruise ship steaming from the Bahamas. And did I bash him as a person? Did I bash him steaming. for missing? <laughs> no, no but I this, didn't. No, but your father, your, your father loves applying rules to others that don't apply Damn to him. Right He's I the do. boss. He I was rage-filled. Didn't speak to his son for days, and furthermore, polluted last week's show with his rage. Thank you. Because he couldn't bring himself to funny. Because he was so mad at his son for tailgating, yeah. enjoying 70 points, enjoying a 70-point victory. Yeah, and but not sharing it with my podcast audience. 
He wanted the exclusive get of his son drunk from the yes, tailgate. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted. He deserves it. Calling no. for a raucous bar. Brought him to life. I mean, with I, Dadder Day being chanted in the background. Dadder Day, Dadder Day, Dadder Day. That's what I wanted. Did I get Dadder it? Day. No. Dadder Day. Thank you. Speaking of singing, we have more video of Lucy on that interminable airport bus ride, and she wanted to ask Greg Cody's opinion how he would feel in general about having somebody on a bus when you're a weary traveler uh, sing, and this part is important, an original song that will not stop. Lucy has told me that yesterday we played the short version somehow of this annoying bus driver we have a longer version and she says it was non-stop for many many minutes he never stopped singing so lucy what context do we need for this so he sang multiple songs not just one original song this was the first song he sang for everyone and it wasn't like he was like oh i think i'm just going to sing today it was clearly planned out because he had an opening he had a performance line this is the opener that, that led he into got, this song first right set. here he looked, in the mirror. he looked in the mirror before going on stage in the morning after and prepared for I'm going to sing to these weary travelers. I've got a performer buried inside of me, and I'm now just a bus driver at the airport. That will not stop me from being entertaining. Listen to this. How annoying is this, Chris Cody? I didn't get to sleep at all last night. I got to thinking about you. I got to Drink a pot of coffee, eat some Oreos, turn on my computer, watch YouTube videos, and last night I didn't get to sleep at all. If all I do my best, Lord knows that I should get more rest. But more and more I said that when I go to bed, there's just too much going on in my head. Get to sleep at all. No, no. Bring it back to a new I course. Went into work again, feeling <laughs> tired. If the boss catches oh. on, then I might get fired. And last night, I didn't get to sleep, didn't get to sleep. No, I didn't get to sleep at all. I don't know what's come over me. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Greg Cody, your thoughts? He loves it. You know what? That's the kind of thing that is absolutely delightful for about 30 seconds, and then it falls off a cliff and becomes the most annoying thing you've ever heard of. He sang two more songs after that, by the way. Really? Two more songs. Well, it's part of the first set. I mean. <laughs> everyone, everyone here had the same reaction listening to that, which is that would be Greg Cody as a bus driver. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I yeah. They, whatever... Latent talent I have waiting to come out would come through because I'm not going to let a bus hold me back, Jack. You know, I'm going to do my thing. I would absolutely, I would take requests. Uh, you know, I would have a boom box on the seat just to the left of me. Right. So it was inconspicuous. So what I respect think, about a band? what I respect about this driver is he wasn't taking requests. He wasn't playing the hits. He was singing his own stuff. Yeah. And it was pretty good. He Jeremy, didn't mail it in. Jeremy, I mean, you have a professional voice. That was a pretty good voice, right? Seems like someone who clearly was a musical theater performer and wrote a musical about his experiences as a bus driver. There you go. More power to him. Don't be held back. People with talent, you may not have the job to show it. Make it. Do it anyway, despite your job. Sing in an office. Do whatever you got to do. I need to explain to the audience, Lucy has said, please do not sing to me without permission. But I need to explain to the audience listening only on audio without video that Greg Cody's gas station glasses are so cheap and plastic <laughs> that the amount of humidity and fogging that there is because the glasses that are hard shaped are too close to his face looks like a bare ass of a very small, small child has been uh, sat upon those glasses wow. and left an imprint. An uncomfortable. Weird uh... sentence. But it looks like either <laughs> angel's wings or the imprint of an ass. Those are the. Those I'll are go the... with the angel's wings. <laughs> it was an oddly specific visual. I mean, <laughs> a small child. Is, I mean, come on now. 